Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we are loading in here. Uh, there we go. Fantastic. And I wanted to hop into the astronaut complex. Now I've hired these two additional pilots because all that th were available here was pilots and I'm hoping that that will cause some other types to generate. We actually may need to hire a couple more. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have a lot of pilots, but we need to send Bill and Bob out to Ike. That's who we're going to have to send here. I want to check mission control quick before we head off. The science data from Space Around Eve is exceptionally easy. We can certainly do that. Otherwise, I don't think we're going to do anything else here at this point. So let's go over to the tracking station, get this contract done, and then we'll head off to Ike. That'll be absolutely great. Oh, we can get rid of some of this debris. <laughs> as long as we're in here, we may as well get rid of the debris. So we'll terminate all of this. Yeah, the fuel delivery machine doesn't need to exist. The outpost debris. Yep. There's a lot of debris here from all those refueling missions, but that's fine. There we go. So we're just going to grab our EVE splashing machine, which is actually at this point a commsat. And we're going to use this. Does this have a thermometer on it? I don't know if it does. It actually does not. Hmm. Okay. I believe we have a satellite around Gilly that we could use. The long-range communication machine here. I don't think we need two around Gilly. I'm going to leave the one around Gilly in the polar orbit. The equatorial orbit, we're just going to escape from Gilly, and we're going to do it that way. So, we'll just push out our apoapsis here a bit, and warp to, let's see here, that's 19 days in the future. This is in five hours. So this is going to be, like, out over here. Cool. So we'll just escape from Gilly. This is fine. I'm not too concerned about it. This will be in virtually the same location. In fact, we could put this in like a polar orbit over Eve if we really wanted to, but I don't think it's strictly speaking necessary. So we're just going to warp on out of here. We're going to grab our thermometer reading and we'll just transmit that back. Cool. Contract complete. So let's head back to the space center here. And now we're going to send Bill and Bob off to Ike. However, there is one thing that we need to do. I noticed that one of our big orange tanks had oxidizer in it. And that's actually a big mass no-no when we are using our uh, oh, nuclear engine. We don't want that. That's so much extra mass there that we just aren't going to use ever. So that's going to kill our Delta V. Absolutely demolish it. So we're going to get rid of that. And uh, we're going to open up. I believe the auto-saved variant is fine. But I'm going to go to the regular variant. So that would be this guy. There we go. And we have a small, a small oscillation from down here. I'm not too concerned about that. But it's this tank here. It has oxidizer in it. Let's get rid of that. That will save us how much mass? So we're 963 tons right now is our liftoff mass. Look at that. In our nuclear tank, that shaves off like 17 tons. That is so much extra Delta V. So, so much. So we're definitely going to do that. Let's check these other tanks and make sure. Good. This one is a chemical tank, and so we need the oxidizers. And the rest of this we need oxidizer in as well. But this should be fine. We do, of course, need to bring in Bill and Bob. Unfortunately, we don't have another engineer-scientist combo, but hopefully we'll get some eventually. And let's put this out on the pad. So we're going to lift this off, and we are going to definitely, absolutely definitely, head off to Ike here. We need to get that done, and then we're going to need to design a very simple Duna Lander. I'm not sure how we want to do that just yet. Duna has a thin atmosphere. We can't rely necessarily on parachutes as much as we did on EVE. 
but Duna's easier than Eve. I'm not expecting substantial issues there. Let's go ahead and lift this off, because we've got an Ike to go to. Fantastic. So we can immediately see that we are... Uh, this thrust is... Oh no, that's the thrust. The thrust to weight ratio is improving quite a bit. We do need to start our gravity turn, and so we shall. There is a small rotational anomaly that crops up with this. That's reasonably fine. We're just going to lock to prograde for right now. And we'll get that uh, rotation a little under control. Note that this number does not appear to be accurate entirely for reasons that I cannot explain. But uh, we'll, we'll get rid of our SRBs eventually, once they run out of fuel. But that time is not now, it would seem. We've got another, it says 24 seconds. It's actually closer to a minute of burn time on there. I have no idea why this is so inaccurate. I can only imagine it has something to do with these hemispherical liquid fuel tanks being fuel piped into the Jumbo 64s. It's very strange, that's for sure. At any rate, we are punching up through the atmosphere reasonably swiftly. I like it. And our SRBs are going to be detaching eventually. This is a monster of a rocket. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely ridiculous, this thing. But we're lifting a lot of weight here. We're lifting a full colony and the fuel to get it places all at once. It's a lot. No doubt about that. So two, one, mark. Okay, I'm letting it settle. There we go. Cool. We're going to fix our rotation. And we're going to hop into orbital mode here. At this point, I want to head all the way over to the horizon. Okay. Something kind of like this. The rotation is... It's got a bit of a lag time to it. So getting that rotation under control can be a little bit awkward. But this is mostly where we want to be. There we go. Now it should be fine. So we're just going to burn here until we hit 100 kilometers. And we should have enough in these side tanks to fully circularize as well. So that's absolutely great. We're going to circularize at 100 kilometers. Not any lower for the time being. And we'll be hitting that 100 kilometer mark now, actually. So let's go ahead and hop out over here, get our maneuver made. So we'll just be circularizing this with a prograde burn. Something along the lines of that. Beautiful. We'll hop over to the maneuver, maneuver node, and we should also extend a solar panel. Doesn't really matter which one. We'll just get this one extended. Cool. And this burn will be in about two minutes for our circularization. Okay, so we'll warp ahead here once we get into position. And I am realizing that it's a bit of a design flaw to have our tail fins be on this stage at this point. We're going to be carrying that mass further than we need to. In future, we should move them out here to be like, well, we would reposition these so that we don't hopefully pick up that oscillation. And then put the tail fins, like, centered here, and then position the SRBs outside of that. That would be an optimization of this, for sure. A small one, but an optimization nonetheless. So we're going to commence this burn in about 20 seconds. Well, I want to continue the warp. There we go. About 5 seconds. 3, 2, 1, and mark. And off we go. Beautiful. We've got enough Delta V in here to actually start some of our moon transfer burn, which is great. That's a very good sign. And we can see we've got almost 5k Delta V in here. Not bad at all. I like it. So 5k Delta V, Delta v in orbit, that's pretty solid. 
The nuclear engine is going to have some long burns on it, though. There's no doubt about that one. Okay, I'm just uh, working on this circularization a little bit. It doesn't matter. This is good enough. Okay, so next up, of course, we're going to gravity assist around the moon and use that to fling ourselves out of the system at a savings of a few delta V. So it's going to need to be a little later than that, I think. Uh, sometime around... Here-ish. How's that looking? That flings us out. Is it an impact trajectory? It is not. We can probably dial this in a little bit. Does it really matter, is the question. Not really. I think this is fine. We'll go ahead and head over to that maneuver node, and we will go ahead and physics warp our turn. This is going to be a very lengthy turn, but honestly, this is going reasonably quickly, considering just how much mass there is in this thing still. Remember, we haven't touched the liquid fuel in our center core yet. There's a lot of mass there. So we were able to turn that quite effectively. I like it. We're going to warp on forward until our burn, which is going to be in about 20 minutes here. There we go. Excellent. About four more minutes, and we get like a third of this burn done with our ascent stage. I love it. That's really, really good. So we're going to physics warp as we get this turn done. Cool, we've got another 30 seconds until this burn. And we burn. Excellent. We're going to be ditching this stage very shortly. Three, two, one, mark. And off we go. Now this does gimbal. But we're having a bit of a hard time making our way to the maneuver node. Okay, it seems reasonably fine. Now, thrust to weight on this is very low, right? We know that. This is not going to be a fast-burning engine. This is a very, very slow-burning engine. We've got about 4,000 delta V to get to where we're going, which is more than enough. I'm also noticing that I probably should have rotated this to have these be aligned... Yeah, in retrospect, I would have preferred that. Oh, well. It's fine. I'm sure. I'm sure it's fine. So this burn is going to be continuing for a few minutes, right? And can we physics warp this? It seems quite stable. Yeah, physics warping it seems fine. So off we go. We're going to need to check our final trajectory. Because of the thrust to weight shift, it could have been thrown off a little bit because the first section had really high thrust to weight. And then the, the last section, the last two thirds had much lower thrust to weight. So that could throw off our actual trajectory here. We will have to check that. But let's see how that goes. We are compensating for it somewhat here, we can see. So we've got about another 15 seconds left in this particular burn. It's looking reasonable. Okay. That'll do. We'll save the 5.6 meters per second. We don't need to hit it exactly. This will do exactly what we need, flinging us right on out of the Kerbin system. Excellent. So we are on our way. I like it. Next up, of course, we're going to warp our way over this direction. I'm a little bit concerned right now, though, about having only this solar panel extended. I'm also going to extend this one so that we're more likely to not have situations like this where this panel is mostly occluded. Although it is actually getting energy flow, which surprises me slightly. Okay. So our next move, of course, is to come out over here. We are setting Duna as our target. But we need to escape Kerbin first. So our first step is to head out to the moon. Beautiful. 
So out we go. We've still got about an almost 4,000 Delta V in this thing, right? That's a lot of Delta V. And Duna isn't that bad to navigate in, unlike Moho and Eve. So that should be fine. Loading in the Moon Sphere of Influence here, and there we go. Now we're going to warp on past the moon. Thank you for your energy. Your sacrifice was noted. Eventually, if you do this too many times, you'll cause the moon to crash into Kerbin. But, I mean, that's not actually simulated in the game. But we are stealing a little bit of its velocity when we do that. It's such a minuscule amount that it would take, like, probably billions or trillions of these gravity assists to do that. I don't even know how many, but it would be a ridiculous number. So it's not really a, you know, viable thing. <laughs> uh, when are we going to be out here? Okay, so we need to warp somewhere around here-ish. 14 days. Sounds good. So we are heading out towards Duna. We're going to have to do a slight inclination change, I think. It's actually very, very close. We may not have to do an inclination change to Duna. I did not mean to cancel the auto time warp. I meant to exit the map. Okay, let's warp up over here. There we go. Fantastic. Goodbye, Kerbin. We are not coming back. And Bill and Bob are going to live on Ike. They, they don't want to live on this planet anymore. They are done. And who can blame them, really? It's going to have a moon crash into it with a few trillion more gravity assists. <laughs> Apparently. Oh, I like how that's like the, uh, that, that's, that's the lore now. Okay, so only 0 0.1 degrees. We can probably get away with not doing a gravity assist. Oh, that's really close. We actually launched at a not quite perfect time, but a decent time for the uh, Duna intercept. This is only 700 meters per second, right? Like, our rocket right now is wildly, wildly overpowered for this. But that's okay. I prefer overpowered over underpowered. So that's good. Okay, we're going to bring this in on a slightly better inclination. This will do for now. I think this burn will be absolutely fine. So we can align for the burn. And we can see that we still have a lot of nuclear fuel left. Like I said, this engine will for sure, like this design overall, will for sure take us out to dress. Realistically, with 4,000 Delta V in Kerbin orbit, actually almost 5,000, we could basically get anywhere. Basically. So that's definitely an interesting interesting concept there. I'm not sure if this is really going to be, like, mega viable for Jewel and Elu, but we'll see. Uh, we're in physics warp. <laughs> That's why this isn't time warping. Okay, there we go. Now we're time warping. Fantastic. Goodbye, Kerbin, again. It's, uh, shrinking into the distance. Fantastic. And we should eventually complete our contract for this. This is not the Duna contract. We're going to do Duna next. I don't know if we can get another engineer and scientist, but here's a question. Do we actually need the engineer and scientist? Well, yes and no. If we want to have the outpost be actually manned, then yeah. If, if we just want it to go there and not really do anything... Then it's not strictly necessary, I suppose. But it's certainly awkward. No doubt about that. We've got about 30 seconds here until our transfer burn, which is going to be a reasonably lengthy one, about a five minute long burn. We are, of course, going to physics warp that burn. No doubt about that one. So we physics warp the burn and off we go. Now the question is, how much is it going to cost us to do a breaking burn once we get to Duna? I don't think it's going to be too bad. Nowhere near what the breaking burn on Moho cost, which was like 4,000 Delta V. <laughs> that, that's insane, for the record. Absolutely insane. And that breaking burn is why that took so many refueling runs. But off we go. Got about another two minutes left in this burn. 
and our apoapsis is raising on up here. So yeah, I'm very confident that this gets us to dress. I'm somewhat confident that this gets us to the jewel system, but maybe we don't navigate very much in the jewel system. I don't know. We'll have to feel that one out as we head out to dress. That'll probably be our indicator, how much Delta V we have left at that point. So we're coming out of our physics warp, and the burn is over. Let's look at our encounter. This'll do. Reminder. Uh, this is auto-saving or something? It's uh, frozen. There we go. Reminder. Ike is our target here, not Duna. So at this periapsis, we're going to add a maneuver. We definitely could have had a more efficient transfer here. That's for sure. Hello. That's just an Ike encounter right there. It does impact the surface of Ike. But we can pull it back to be something like this. That's beautiful. So now we don't have to do an Ike transfer. I love it. This is great. Because once we hit here, we can circularize really, really cheaply. Cool. Okay, so we'll align for that. That's going to be in about 276 days. So that's a pretty lengthy burn. Or not, not really the burn. The burn is a little lengthy. But it's a pretty lengthy time warp. For sure. Let's go ahead and get that started. Yeah, that's definitely a lengthy one, but we are, like, we have a really, really good encounter here. We lucked out on that one. That was not skill. That was purely luck. There's our Ion Collector giving back some data. That is 20%. Okay. So we're going to have this contract completed relatively soon, right? Yeah, relatively soon. We'll get more data back eventually. But this burn is going to be a lengthy one. It's looking like timing-wise, what we're going to do here is we're going to enter orbit of Ike this episode, and next episode will be the actual landing and deployment of the, of the colony. And then we'll do our Duna landing. Like, not probably next episode, but Duna is going to need a little bit of arrow braking. And we're going to have to reconfigure our landing profile overall for Duna. So that's going to be the thing, right? That's going to be the whole thing. We're going to grab our data high over Duna for right now. Cool. We can always grab more data later, but this will do for now. This will be for processing in the lab. And we'll retract this boom cool. And this burn will be in a few seconds. I'm going to start up a physics warp here, and we're going to remain physics warped throughout this whole burn, because it is a four and a half minute burn. Commencing the burn, and off we go. Beautiful. And we can see Ike right there. Did we check our thrust weight over Ike? Surely Ike doesn't have more gravity than Moho. Surely it doesn't, right? I'm pretty sure it doesn't. <laughs> but that's actually really cool. Duna and Ike in the background there. I like it. That's great. So we're going to be finishing this burn in about two minutes, which is actually about 30 seconds in the physics warp, like in terms of real time, about 30 seconds on that. And we're going to come out of the physics warp a little bit early because I do want to make sure that we get this good encounter here. This is a really, really solid encounter on Ike, and I love it. Good timing saves a lot of Delta V. No doubt about that one. So we are going to be wasting Delta V here. That's not necessarily shocking. Okay, coming out of the, of the burn, or rather the warp at this point. Okay, and let's just gently pull this one on out. There we go. That'll do. That's perfectly fine. So from here, we will enter orbit, and we will look to circularize-ish that orbit. Actually, let's just go to a minimal orbit here. Well, no. Let's bring it down to around 30 kilometers. Sounds good to me. 
Okay, we'll line for that burn. It is, however, about time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we are going to land on Ike. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including Kazerol, ALS Gamer, Kentuin, James, Shadow Wolf, Mlohan80, Kentogan, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Unisol, Kadra, Rogue Corvid, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.